Hello, I'm George from Pavlicek Studios, and I'll be making a marble today. As we saw in the pre-show, it's going to look like this. It's going to have a clear core. It has swirls that spin around in two axes. Call that technique a torsion. It's not really a twist, but it's got like pent up twisting energy. All right. So the first thing you do is you need a torch. It's propane and oxygen. It's very hot. I have a variety of glass rods. Um, I'm using some recycled blue rods uh, that are pulled out from my mistakes that are going to be the core. And I have some clear glass rod that's going to go on the surface. That's a higher quality. And I'm going to use some colors in small amounts to make the stripe on the central core before I cover it with clear. I'm also going to add some UV active glass which comes from glass I got from a fellow marble maker that's from the 1800s that I mixed down with clear to make this very powerful UV uh, active glass that glows under black light. Alright, so to make a marble, I'm going to get a gather uh, over a torch. It's different than going into a furnace to get a gather of glass. Once I have the gather of the right size, then I will decorate the intermediary layer. Then I'm going to cover it with clear, which I could um, cover over if I had a furnace with one single gather. But here I'll be doing it with swipes of a clear glass rod to give that final case. So, to begin, I'm just going to flash these rods. I need to get the glass up past its first strain point, which is about 500 degrees. Once I get them close to that, I can stop wiggling them through the flame and just put them in the flame. If I put them in initially, they would just hiss and pop and explode and shards would go everywhere. Which sounds cool, but it's not. So I turned on my oxygen and propane valves to the right pressure. And uh, you always turn on your propane first, then your oxygen, and then you turn uh, off your oxygen first, and then your propane when you're lighting your torch. And the easy way to remember that is poop. Propane oxygen, oxygen propane. Poop. All right, so I've got my rods hot. I am, I push them together and I rotate them and then I angle them so I pull in some of the rod that's farther along. Then I twist them again. And if I do this right while I'm keeping them in the flame, and uh, keeping it hot and moving, I don't trap air. But I want to show you guys, so I'm going to trap all kinds of air. It's going to be fun. Look at that. Looks like a mess. So this doesn't have to look like anything yet. I'm just getting my class together till it's about the right size. You can have fun here, play with it. Get a feel for the stretchiness and the wiggliness. And one thing about glass is that you always have to keep it spinning because gravity wants to make it fly. Since I have two handles on here, one of each, on each side with this glass rod, that's not happening quite so much. If I got it really hot, though, it might actually uh, fall down. But we won't do that. Well, we did that, but we won't do it again unless we want to. All right, let's get this a little bit bigger. Now, we'll get it back to being a ball. I'm going to keep it rotating to keep air bubbles out. And as I rotate it, I'm going to every once in a while just bend it and keep spinning it, and it's going to draw in some of the cool solid rod 
into the little gather. Now I'm just going quickly. It's uh, you can actually do this quite carefully and get a very nice bubble-free core. I am not doing that. I'm just going quickly and messily. And this side is getting short and it's getting hot on my hand, so I'm going to go ahead and melt that off. So, I get a new piece that's longer and keep that. It's a thin piece, so I don't have to flash it. And I'm going to just keep it going. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Now, once this is bigger, what I'm going to do is I'm going to initially shape it into a cylinder about a half to five eighths in diameter and about one inch in length. Let's get this gathered just to the right size. Then I'm going to melt off one side. And then I'm going to give it a rough shape to that cylinder size that I was talking about. What I'm going to do is I have a graphite marvering plate just to the left of me. So I can bring my glass down onto that and shape it. I also have a graphite paddle which has a tiny flat surface. I'm going to work the paddle and the marver plate together. And since graphite removes heat from glass relatively quickly, I'm only going to do that for like two or three seconds and I'm going to be back into the heat. But I'll take this messy shape and it's going to be more cylindrical when I return. It will be astounding. Let's watch. <laughs> How many seconds is that? More than two or three. All right. Well, I had some uh, wood dust or something on my paddle because when I hit the glass, it left a big black smear on the glass. But it, of course, it vaporized right away because this glass is at nearly 2,000 degrees, which is uh, hot enough to get rid of any sort of wood ash almost completely. All right, I'm going to give this one more shaping to make it a little more cylindrical and flatten the end too as I get in on there. And then I'm going to transfer this end to a stainless steel punty. So I got it a little more cylindrical. Let's look at it under a magnifying glass. Doesn't look like much yet. Now, I'm going to heat up the stainless steel. Um, whenever I heat up the stainless steel to uh, between orange and yellow hot, it will bore kind of into the glass as long as the glass is not too chill. And I'll bore in about a 30 second of an inch. Let's have a look. A little off center. That's okay. I'm going to come back in and improve the cylindrical shape of this once I melt off this other clear glass rod. And then I will just be holding it with this one stainless steel handle, also known as a punty or a bridge. I'm going to turn up my heat just a little bit and get some heat back in that core. Between talking and switching to the handles and marvering it on the graphite plate, it's gotten pretty cold and pretty hard and difficult to shape. So let's get it hot again because uh, hot glass works so much better. You get a lot more um, time to manipulate the glass and have it do what you want, especially if you're at a confidence level where you're not going to over push and uh, backtrack any work that you've already done. So this is nice and hot. Orange. And I'm going to improve its cylindrical shape and come right back to the camera. So I'm rolling it on the marble plate gently, sandwiched between the graphite plate on my bench and the graphite paddle that I have. And I improved the shape, and I say improve because I'm not trying to make it perfect the first time. 
I want to get it closer to the shape that I want, but if I try to do too much too fast, I will overshoot and ruin all my work. So look, it's cylinder, it's almost flat on both ends. That's actually pretty darn good. I'm going to try to get it a little bit closer to my ideal shape. Um, and you know, you can play with this as much as you want. You could get it super amazingly perfect and symmetrical and cylindrical and everyone would be impressed and uh, your uh, senator would call you on the phone and congratulate you and you could still ruin the marble later. So let's get on to some decorating because that is the fun part. So you don't ever want to let the glass get too cold and especially you don't want to neglect the junction point in your punty and your glass gather because if it gets too cold it'll crack off fall on your bench and then trying to save it um, often introduces so many other problems that you will uh, well you'll learn a lot but you won't necessarily have a nice marble at the end so I want this marble to be mostly clear have some color stripes on it and so I'm going to do four colored stripes 90 degrees separated from each other and then I'm going to sneak in a few lines, probably two, of the UV stringer that I have pulled uh, so that it glows under black light later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach, wipe down, and melt off. And I'll show you what that looks like. And what I need is enough glass to work with that's melted on the end of my color rod so that I can complete my line without getting stuck halfway and without having too much that is uh, a big blob that's going everywhere. So I want to be somewhere in the middle of there. I want to attach, I want to drag down, I want to melt off. And I've made the stripe along the cylinder. And so it's a little bit heavy at my attachment point, and it's a little bit rarefied, thinner, uh, towards where I melted it off. That's okay. Um, if you want to make sure that your um, your mass is not getting off center and your swipe technique is a little heavy on the application side and a little light on the removal side, then there is a way to combat that. You go to your next stripe and you attach at the, uh, the opposite side. And you attach, pull, and melt off. So there I've repeated the process, but in the opposite fashion. 90 degrees off. Now, let's get my next color and we'll do the same thing. And let's see, do, what color do I want next to the light blue? Let's do, uh, no, I want the purple opposite the pink. Just because. It's my marble, I'll do what I want. So, <laughs> you can make your marble any way you want, and any way you want, it's going to be the way you meant it to be, especially if it turns out nice. If it doesn't turn out nice, then you just don't show it to anyone. You learn and you move on. So now I've got three stripes on there. Let's do the fourth. And for this one, I'm going to do the same um, as my second one, a second attachment point. I'm going to attach at the point away from the handle and move towards, rather than at the handle side and move away. Now, I'm going to take my UV glass and I'm going to put a stripe between the biggest blank areas. Or maybe it should have UV glass in all of those. Yes, that should be in all of those areas. That's what I think. So, it's going to be difficult to see because it's mostly clear, but there's a line of UV glass between those two. Next spot. Next spot. Oops, I broke it. That's okay. It broke. I welded two small pieces together, and where I welded it, it broke a little bit off of that joint, which happens a lot when you're welding two pieces together. You fuse them, 
but then as it cools it makes micro cracks and then if you push on it too hard it cracks at that place so you can see here it was there where I welded the two together and it cracked just a little bit away from there. All right, so now I essentially have eight stripes on here. Four of opaque color and four of the transparent um, UV glass. So let's melt it all in. And I will give it a little bit of a smooth using the same technique that I used to make this gather cylindrical to push all those stripes of color and UV active glass into a new cylinder. Then I'm going to come back and do those wipes of stripes from one side to the other back and forth with a clear rod covering over all of that color and then we're going to start to twist it. So now you can see that's really all starting to melt together. It looks very nice surface tension is pulling it into a smooth cylinder. I'm going to give it a little bit of help with the next heat here, just so I have a nice smooth base to put my clear glass casing on. I'm going to do it one more time because messing around with glass is fun. And when it's hot and you get to squish it, that's like the best part. There we go. So now, I'm going to heat up a bigger clear rod, because I don't want the light blue to change the colors. Um, that I put down, so let me find, ah, here it is. I usually spend a minute or two getting all the things I want ready before and setting them out, and uh, sometimes if I have like little glass chips everywhere, I will vacuum up, set everything out, and then work for the day, and then by the end of the day, everything is trashed. So you feel like you've done a lot. All right. My clear glass rod. This is a slightly larger than normal size. This is a, a nice um, size for casing without putting too much glass on. It's like your five to seven millimeter rods are what your normal color is. This is more like a nine. Um, you're not quite using like those big glass rods that I use to make inside out flowers. But you can still get a lot of clear glass on something pretty fast. I made my gather on this rod a little bit too big because I was yapping, but I'm going to uh, touch and swipe and melt off. There's my first casing slug. And now I'm going to go the opposite way and push against the little valley where the gl clear glass meets the opaque stripes underneath. Um, and pushing like Attachment and pushing is going to keep air bubbles from getting trapped. If I put stripes down and then pushed the stripes all together like I did the color, I would be sort of pushing all of the hills together so it looked like flower petals and I'd mash those down and between the flower petals that were going all the way around would get squished and Air. Now, see the two gathers I put on there like that are laying right next to each other and they've already joined. And there's no air trap in between them. So now, I'm going to try to keep, keep it going and get a couple of them in there. You develop like a rhythm. So I do that gather and then heat and like hopefully and like 10 seconds, I'll have my next gather going. I don't want to overheat my base marble because I don't want to smear the color as I'm putting this hot clear over top. I want the clear to smush over like icing on a cake without disturbing what's underneath. And there's two or three more I just put on there. So now I need to do about three more. OK. 
can see a layer of clear that's going over my existing cylinder. So that part is still exposed that I'm showing you right now. Those are the parts that are covered with clear. A little bit lumpy, but that's all right. We're going to get it even after we're done putting all this casing clear over the top. Then we're going to start rotating it along the axis that this handle is attached to. Punty. And then once we've got a nice even twist, not too twisted, maybe um, we'll do like a little over one and a half revolutions all the way around. Then we're going to switch our punties off 90 degrees and spin it again, maybe about one revolution. All right, so now I've got the whole thing cased. You can see the clear. Uh, UV stripes. Well, you can't see the clear UV stripes, but they're between those opaque colored stripes. Let's click in the magnifying glass. And the clear glass is over time. No, it's melted all together. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to squeeze the ends down. I'm going to take the clear and push it over the edge and then I'm going to pinch it off and bring all those colored stripes to a point. Then I'm going to get a new steel handle attached there, flip it over, do the same thing to the other end. Once I have both of those ends relatively nice, then I'll start putting in the twist. So let's start bending that clear over the end. I'm going to just get in there while I, where I can, where I see they're the farthest back and bring them forward. The ends of those clear slugs that I put down and push them out towards the end. And you can see where I've been pushing them out towards the end and the end is now looks to be recessed and the ends of those slugs are coming out. So now I'm going to finish pushing those over. I lost a lot of heat, so let's give it a second to get back up. And if these tweezers get too hot, they're going to stick in the glass. So you, you see me putting them over here. I'm putting them in water to chill them back down. All right, now that end is all the way pushed over. Let's get my glass. Wait for the color to resolve. You can see the stripes are coming to a point. They're not really to a point yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull them out. Actually, one of these colors is pretty far behind. This purple, so I'm going to go back and grab it. Grab some of that purple and drag it over. I wonder if you can see that. Let's try there. So I went in to get that purple because it wasn't coming to the end. And I grabbed it and I pulled it in. Now, I'm going to melt the end and pull off some of this with the tweezers. And I could also get in here with a little mini jack. I'm using a scissors. And start clipping that. Where am I here? I'm clipping that. And pulling it. Making a little ball. And then the scissors chill it, so it'll just pop off. Luckily, my bench is all cement port back and bottom, so um, I don't have to worry about those little hot pieces doing any damage other than to the white paint, which I put over everything just so it doesn't look gray. Get a little more light bouncing around. All right, so that end is ready to go. Let's put on the handle on that side, and then we'll do the same thing to the other side. We're going to take the ends of our slugs, clear slugs, that we put over the decoration that we made on the core. And then 
to pull all of those stripes, which are actually in the, in the middle layer, to a point. So to go back to the beginning, the inside of that marble is a light blue glass that's recycled from previous projects. I just like the way it looks, especially with a nice pastel stripe like this. And then the covering glass is nice new clear glass so that the colors that I put down will be the colors that you see. And then once everything is cased and the points are nice, we're going to start twisting the bejeevers out of it. So, you can see that's just a basic open end of the cylinder. That's what I was trying to show you before. So now I'm going to pull the ends of those clear down over the cylinder, and those stripes are going to come down to a point. I'll get in there, do manipulation as I go, chill my tweezers, letting the, this end get really hot. This end is just staying warm, like warm enough so it doesn't crack off. But I don't want it moving around and flopping around. So once this is hot, I can really get in there and start doing a lot of manipulation. If it gets too hot, then your tool will just pull right through because it's like getting uh, too liquidy. So I backed off a little bit. It's getting too hot. Now, I think I like go away. So I pulled that clear glass over, ends, and I've made sure that my opaque stripes went to the end and then I pulled it off so that everything came to a point. I just pulled glass off until all the stripes evened out. So removing material is often the key to making your design better. Um, adding more will usually be a detriment to your design. So you start a little bit bigger and end up being a little bit smaller. Thank you, Chris. Someone, Chris, just Venmoed me for the show. That was very cool of you, dude. All right, now I got two handles on this, and I'm going to start spinning. Well, I'm always spinning. Let me say that a little more accurately, that I'm spinning with both hands but every once in a while I'm catching with one or the other, just a little bit, so that some of that spinning motion turns into rotation within the model. You see how just in a short period of time I've got a twist going on in this marble. Got a little bit cold there, which actually is good. When it gets cold, everything slows down. You can see what you're doing. As long as you don't wait too long, you can get the heat back up, get some more twist in there. So I'm adding twist right now. What are you guys laughing at? Okay. All right, so now I've got all the twist I want in there. And I'm gonna get this just a little bit more spherical to melt off the handle that's in my right hand, which I think is opposite for you guys. I don't my sign up anymore that has the backwards text on it um, because I thought my cameras were going to be working today. I'm sick of looking at those backwards letters. <laughs> so, so now the cylinder I want to shape into a little more of a sphere. So I'm getting it hot. I'm going to go into one of my marble molds, which is a graphite paddle that's got hemispheres of different sizes in it. I'm going to go to actually one that's, oops, one that's bigger than the size of my marble. I'm going to use just some gentle pressure and some twisting. 
changing the shape only slightly at first. Heat it up and do that one more time. See where I am using the slightly larger hemisphere. If it starts approaching uh, very spherical, I may go to a smaller mold, but getting it spherical right now isn't real important because I'm going to switch my punties off 90 degrees and give it a twist in another direction. So this is spherical enough on this side. You can see it's very marble shaped. So now I'm going to switch my punties 90 degrees. So I'll come in one here. Then I'll attach one on the other side. Oops, the other side. <laughs> and uh, then I will give it some more twist. So let's heat up that punty, that bridge, and attach it. 90 degrees. It's a little bit awkward. Now I'm just going to heat the one that was originally on the, the axis that we were twisting. I'm going to heat it way up. I'll wiggle this back and forth until this comes off. I'm just chilling it to get the glass off of it, all the glass uh, uh, layers that are on there crack off when I put it in water so I can heat it back up. I think I probably just moved it right over. But, you know, you build up these mental procedures that you like to do for uh, cleanliness, not ruining your design, that sort of stuff. And so it's good to stick to those. Alright, so now my punties are attached 90 degrees from our original axis of rotation. I'm going to heat this whole thing up I got some really big ugly air bubbles in this one. It's gonna be great. It's gonna go in the hall of shame. Fun to look at, but you don't wanna put that out there for sale. It's the kind of thing that ends up back in the crucible melted down to the rods that were at the core of this marble. All right, I want the heat to be pretty even here, but I want the ends to be a little bit cooler because I want the middle of the marble to spin, but I want the handle areas to actually be attached firmly enough so that when I'm doing this twisting motion, the twisting's going into the marble and not just spinning the surface of where my handle is attached to. This is the kind of work that really only a lamp worker could do. If you scale this up to glass blowing style um, on, on big punty rods, it would be very difficult to get a twist evenly through a marble like this. You know, you could make that marble with that initial uh, twist on one axis very easily, but to get one where the twist is going through the whole marble. You see how that now is rotating on two axes? Now, the twist that I want has all been imparted to the marble. So, I'm going to heat one of the punkies until it gets loose and pops off. And it looks like my design is intact. There. I'll show that to you in a minute. I'm going to just push that little nub in. And when I have a nub that's sticking out, I don't want it to fold over because sometimes that can disrupt what's underneath. I can also push into a design that's close to the surface and dent it. So um, controlling the way that that returns to the marble will preserve your design. And it's a small point. Um, and totally up to you. I just think it's fun to, you know, get in and get in, get into that kind of stuff. It's why you are here to play around with this kind of stuff. So now 
I've gone to a larger hemisphere with light pressure. I've approximated my spherical shape. Then I've gone to a smaller hemisphere where I'm just using the rim. And as I rotate it, I change my axis of rotation. And then I've got it quite spherical. And the stripes look nice and even. And they're really bent up all weird in exactly the way that I want it. So now, I think this side of the marble is almost done. I'm not going to come back on this side of the marble with a steel punty. I'm going to get the surface really smooth and I'm going to put a glass punty on that side and then I'm going to come back and fix this other side. And I think I can do it gently so this marble is almost complete. So I'm, I'm mostly flame polishing this using heat, rotation, gravity. I'm letting the spherical shape uh, alone, because I had it uh, defined pretty well. But now I'm taking all the little chill marks and the ripples out of the surface, and I'm going to harden the surface now with a cherry wood paddle, which is basically a piece of cherry wood that I've been soaking in water. It's got holes drilled into it. And I use the rim, I rotate, and we're using each hole for a few seconds, changing the axis of rotation as I rotate. And I got it. That is a smooth marble, the design I want. Now, I'm going to use a punty. It's got a pencil point, so small. Actually, I want a, a little bit firmer attachment for this last one, um, just because I have a little bit of work to do on that side that's attached to the steel punty. So I'm going to put it on a little bit warmer than I normally would, push it down a little bit farther to get a kind of a bigger attachment point than I normally would for a last point. And you know if I have to come back on the other side and do a smaller punty and melt this one off and do a little clean up, it'll only take two minutes and it'll be worth it. But if I can uh, get it done without uh, having to transfer back and forth to another punty, that would be nice. So, you know, you try, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Now I'm going to heat about 60% of this sphere. See how that's a little bit wonky shaped. And 60% of that, and then I'm going to go into a slightly larger hemisphere of graphite on my marble paddle rotations and I'm going to go to a smaller one and spin it I got a pretty spherical there but now this side's not smooth see the ripples from the reflection of the light bulb above wiggle 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 design looks good surface now is, now is good so I'm going to do the same thing as I did on the other side the shape is good. The heat, the surface, that surface tension, gravity, the rotation. Work on the surface slowly. Just gonna pull all those ripples out and make it as smooth as its inner internal surface tension can make it, which is smoother than I could ever force it to be. So I'm tricking it into being a marble. I'm almost smarter than this marble. Not quite. Oh, oh, there we go. It's looking very smooth. And I'm just going to run it through the cherry wood mold. And that's going to improve its sphericalness a little bit. I'm going to let the surface hard enough so that that cherry wood mold's not going to make an indent into the surface itself, but it will nudge the shape a little bit, and it will draw heat out farther into the surface so that I can uh, transfer it. Transferring it is a little bit dicey in that I have to chill the juncture that this last punty is attached to. I'm going to chill it with those little scissors that I showed you earlier. 
Once I take the heat out of that joint, I'm going to tap it. I'm going to tap it off into a fireproof pressed board. And then I'm going to pick up my torch, polish that last attachment point because it's going to be like a little piece of broken glass uh, edge on there. I'm going to heat up a special uh, metal plier that I've made just from picking up marbles. I'm going to transfer it to that annealing oven that the puppet marbles showed you earlier. So let's get our paddle. It's the wood paddle. And I'm going to close. put it in there, rotate, change the axis of rotation as I'm spinning it. Looks nice. Now, I'm going to chill that with these little scissors and tap it off over here. Pick up my torch, I'm going to polish that little mark. Basically what I'm doing there is uh, the first time I'm going to heat it, the whole area, for about four or five seconds. Back off the heat, then I'm going to go back for another three or four seconds, back off again take the torch away, point it away. So I want to polish that, but I don't want to do it all at once. And I want to make sure that I'm not oxidizing the surface of the marble by heating it so fast, because I am going quickly, because I don't want it to get too cold and crack. So that there is a, an, ur, an urgency. So now I'm heating those up, they're red hot. Now when they just go to black, they'll be the right temperature to pick up that marble. And polish that little last point off, very smooth. Now I'm going to put it in the annealing oven. It's hard to see the stripes, but you'll see it tomorrow. I'll post a picture. Be right back. few more minutes left, and so what I wanted to show you is a fish bead. So I have a stainless steel mandrel that's dipped in kiln wash, uh, which is the release agent that they put on hard fire bricks when people fire pottery. And so I mix that into a sludge and I dip my stainless steel wire in it and then I let it dry and now I can use it to make beads. So for these fish beads I'm making a neon tetra. So I need red and blue for its stripes and I need white and black for its eyeball and I have those pre-made little threads. And so what I will do is I'm going to make my bead gather. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to flash my rod a little bit and get it up to temperature. I'm heating my stainless steel rod. You see how it glowing, it's glowing orange? You want it hot enough so that the glass grabs. If it's not hot enough, it's just going to impart a lot of air into the glass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch the glass. I'm going to pull away and spin. And I've made the bead, the basic bead gather. I can use heat and even that up. I want it to be fairly even when I put my next gather of clear on it. And I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to touch, roll, melt off. And there is a slightly larger bead. Now, I'm doing a little red stripe on the bottom of this dot bead. Okay. I'm doing a blue stripe on the top of that bead. Then I turn my flame down to a pinpoint because whenever I'm drawing with those little threads, I like to have my flame way down. Now I'm going to melt those little stripes into the bead and get a hot gather of this light blue glass. 
which is going to look so much like a little neon tetra already. I won't even have to do anything else. It'd be amazing. Okay, I'll do a few things. All right, so just like before, I'm going to touch, turn around, and melt off. So I've left, oops, I've left a big slug of glass over that bead in my stripes. Let's melt it in. And then the next thing I'm going to do is shape the body of the fish a little bit. So there it is, the covered bead, the color stripes in it. And I'm going to squish it flat on either side. So now it's a bean shape. Now I'm going to pull out a tail. So I'm going to take one end, heat it up, touch it with my rod, pull it out, and then melt it off. Is that the fish side or the mouth side? I don't know. Now let's do the other side. Then we'll see which side looks like which. And we'll go with it. So there we go. Shape. This works for birds and fish. I know which side I'm going to do what. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some lips on the fish. Take my blue thread. This is a bigger thread than I normally use for decorating. I made it specifically for doing these little fishies. And I made a little lip blob. Now I'm going to give him a smile with my little dental tool. Now let's give him some eyes so he can see, so he can check my work. Alright, put on his, the white part of his eye. Let's put on his people. This is not what real fish eyes look like, but my fish, I'll make it the way I want. And it'll be funny looking. That's okay. So there is his little googly eyes. His cute little mouth. Now let's put some fins on him. Then he'll be done. So the first thing I want to put on is the uh, side fins. I think those are the pectoral fins. Now, because the bead mandrel, the little uh, wire, is at the top, I can't put in his top fin on this particular fish design. So I'm going to skim a tail. I like the way these look as a bead. They're balanced. Um, you can make them bigger. I, have, I do two different sizes bigger than this. I do a, a smaller one too, but uh, this is the size that's best for uh, earrings and beads and people to see from a distance that this is a fish. I'll be right back. Got a little more time, an hour, so I'm going to do that one more time. So he has a friend 
maybe a, an earring mate. A lot of times if you're making uh, beads for earrings, I usually try to make 10 or more the same thing in a row. You get a feeling going, you know, things are coming out kind of the same size in the same way. And then because you've been doing them all at the same time, you clean them and then you can pair them up right away. And the pairs look good. I just have a little bit of maintenance to do here. I've got a lot of little short ends, which you can't really work because the flame starts burning you. So what I do is, um, with the short ends like this, I will heat those ends and then join them and roll them out. So. While I turn it, I just make sure it's straight. Because if it's bent, it's going to be difficult to use. Now, if you remember earlier, we had, uh, I was pushing on that uh, UV glass and it broke. And you can see where I joined here. There's the part where it joined together. And then here is like a little heat fracture. And there's one down here too, where my fingernail is heat fracture. Join one key heat fracture. So those can break again, but you know, things happen. You know what? I think we'll have just enough time to make another fishy. So I'm going to do a quick basic bead, which is actually the trickiest part of the whole thing. If you master a basic bead, I will. Um, be giving a full hour on basic beads uh, at some point in the next couple of months when I get my cameras working and I can show it from a couple different angles. Once you get the basic bead down, there's really no end to what you can do. So preheating your mandrel and the kiln wash, you'll see it glow red. They want it just to start cooling down from that. You gather, you're going to touch, roll it, and melt off. And then you can even it out by turning it and putting it in the flame. You keep it spinning, and you get a nice bead shape. And you want the point where it attaches to the mandrel to be a little bit smaller than the bead itself, so you get a nice... Uh, and pucker where it's not going to have any sharp edges to cut your string or make a mess or hurt anyone. It's basically a little way of seeking uh, meditative perfection in glass, making that base bead. All right, here I put my second gather on. The first one was a little bit big, so I did the second one a little bit small. It's evening out as we speak, and I rotate it. I can't see it. I messed up my camera. <laughs> Is that any good? Uh, Alright, so we were doing red on the belly side. That's down and blue on the top side, I'm melting over the stripe there, like that, and then melt it in while it's hot, and I'll show you that. I'm heating up my other rod as we speak, I clear, I'm going to cover that over a bit. Of skin that keeps catching it. Super annoying. Okay. 
normally I have a little emery board. Uh, so if I have, because I'm rolling things and doing like little precise work, and if your skin or your fingernails catching on stuff, I'm gonna just have that handy so you can rub that rough part of your finger off and not have to stop lose your bead or your marble or whatever you're working on. Same thing with like flies. I always like in the summer I'll close the door and I will wait around and I will pre-swat flies because it never fails. You sit down to do a marble and someone is very interested in it. The dumb fly. ask the same question over and over again. Can I stand here? Can I stand here? No, I'll leave. Can I stand here? No, I'll leave. And usually it's like right on the corner of your eye or on your arm. Anyway, I put the little lip blob on there. Now I'm going to push in and make some lips. Now this one is not going to match my other bead because the body's too big. So let's make the lips bigger. Put a dot on either side of the existing mouth. We melt that in. You see the blob is much bigger now. So now I'm going to make that same mark for the mouth. But now I'm going to give him a smile. I'm going to heat one side and I'm going to pull it up, heat the other side, pull it up, now he is got a big smile. Now let's put some eyes on him, the whites of his eyes. You could make realistic looking fish if you want, but I like the cartoon looking fish for cheerful beads and jewelry. Happy fish. Yes, that's right there, happy fish. I want happy fish. I want happy jewelry. I want happy customers. Look at that. Big happy face. Let's put some fins on them. And then we're gonna call it at in about two minutes. So, I don't have anyone to read questions right now, so I apologize if you had a question. You're, you can actually ask them, and I will answer them uh, after. Because usually I will go in this evening or tomorrow and look at the comments. I won't this evening till later. So i got a couple things I want to do this. So once I put the glass on for the tail, I give it a little flattening. And then if I wanted to make like the bottom a little pointier, I could heat the bottom. And then I'm going to grab it with the existing glass rod and just attach and give it a little pull and then melt it off. So I've made it a little bit pointier. You can have a lot of fun shaping the tails and the fins. Just make sure you don't let the whole fish get cold. Because if you let him get cold and you're spending too much time on the fins, you'll hear that crack. And that means it's already too late. You've lost your bead. So there is one. Big, fat, happy fish. And you can't see his red stripe on his belly right now, but that's going to look very cute. Let me go put him in the oven. All right, and so the last half of poop, uh, oxygen, then propane. Torch is off. I'll bleed those lines later because you don't want to leave any gas, any propane, or any oxygen in your torch overnight when you're not using it. So thanks for coming to look at my demonstration. You can uh, now go uh, 
shopping at my website or go watch uh, this demonstration uh, again if you only caught the first half of it on the Facebook um, group. I'll put it on YouTube uh, tomorrow and then uh, after a thing, after these get about two months old, I'm going to switch them over to the Patreon site. Um, if you're interested in that, uh, I'll, I'll probably say more about it in the Facebook group over the next month or two. I'm still poking at it. Uh, but anyway, I appreciate you coming, and it's great to see you all. I see some of your little faces up uh, as icons above there, which is cool. Just noticing that now. <laughs> and I will see you next week. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Oh, listen. Come on. <laughs>